standby cable thunder to camera one with Joe and Bill's mic. We'll go in three, two, one. Track thunder. The Wink Sports FGCU Basketball Show, presented by Shula Steakhouse of Naples. Go to. Dunk City righted the ship on Saturday night, ending a four-game losing streak with an impressive 16-point win against first place North Florida. Thank you. We've got their head coach, Stand Joe on Dooley, one. on set. Coach, I know you're busy and you got a lot on your mind right now, so I do just real quick want to remind you that Sunday is Valentine's Day. I'm sure your wife wants you to be aware of that. That was a good, friendly reminder. I appreciate that. <laughs> well needed. Now, talk about this game on okay. Saturday and maybe a little bit of pressure in the terms of Four-game losing streak going up against the top team in the conference and a sold-out crowd that wanted no. to see you play well. There's no super well, I think on this one field. of the big problems we had was we played pretty well at North Florida. And Camera one next. Opportunity down, down one with the, uh, with the ball late in the game. Uh, don't get some uh, baskets and don't get needly stops. And then the same thing at Jacksonville on Monday night. We're down two, 30 seconds left with the oh, ball. Look at that. We're playing close but not well enough to win. Put it all together. Outshot the Ospreys, out-rebounded them and only turned the ball over four times. Was this your best game of the season? Okay. Stand it by it one. probably was, but the, the big thing Take was, one. you know, we had a Stand commanding lead one. in the beginning of the game, then took some ill-advised shots okay. and gave them opportunity to get back in the game, and it was good that we righted the ship at halftime and played, played even better than the second half. FGCU now 5-4, and four, two games back of both one. North Florida and Jacksonville. When you see the progression that you're seeing in a game like that, after maybe a, you know, you were starting to kind of get things figured out, but there was a couple games there on the road where, where, where you weren't playing great basketball. Take one. What do you attribute the fact that your team really played so well on Saturday? Well, we got back a little bit of our defensive uh, identity. I mean, we had not shot, we had not guarded like we were capable of. Our stats in the beginning of the year were terrific, and then the last several games, our, our stats were flipped. Uh, we gave up too many three-point shots, too high of a three-point field goal percentage. Uh, and too many points, and then you know our offense has been fine. It's been our defense that's bothered us. Take and UNF leads the nation in three pointers by a mile. You held them to 10 for 35 from the perimeter. Kind of got back to defending the three point line. Number one, can you explain to me what's going right when you are Camera one. defending the three point line? like one of the best teams in the country as you did early on and then you had a little bit of a lapse there. Well, three weeks okay. ago we were second in the country in right. three-point three field goal percentage defense. We, I think the big thing is when you look at the math of it, you have to chase people off the three-point line and you want to make them take contested like two-point shots. Yeah, that means you don't give up layups. You want mid-range jump shots from a statistical standpoint. And We had been giving up too many layups and too many threes. And that's a, that's a bad combination, so I, hopefully we'll get that right. When you're closing out, when you're teaching your players to close out, are you saying, close out to take away the jump shot we will live with them getting by you and, and have some help side defense there or is it still hey 50 50 okay. take away the jumper and scouting the scouting report okay. and, and based on that one on on our scouting reports each player that we're playing against has a has a has a title it's either corver which means you chase him off the line it's iverson which he can do both he can shoot the three or drive it or it's rondo which is you can close out short and let him make it so those guys, when we go through scouting report, we talk to that. What is he? He's a Corver. So that means if, if there's a ball reversed and we're trying to chase him off the line, if it's a Rondo, we're, we're probably hoping you know, to have a contested shot or expect a drive. Yeah. Speaking of the scouting report, two, the guys clean. who are responsible for getting you ready each week, um, as we kind of pause on, on talking about Stand this season, two. maybe look ahead uh, to next season just for a second. When a player transfers from one division, one school to another, you have to sit out a year. You have two such players on your team uh, right now, and let's take a look at two of those guys who are, are, who are sitting out as transfers. Patson Siam, six feet, 11 inches from Zambia, transferred him from Loyola Marymount. He'll have two years of eligibility left. Size-wise, he's as impressive as any player who's ever played here. Is Patson going to be able to be in the rotation next year? He is. I think one of the things with Pat is he blocks shots at a higher rate than the other guys, maybe with the exception of Meech. You know, Trey is not really a shot blocker, but uh, he's got the thing that surprised me is his touch. He can shoot the ball to 17, 18 feet. He's got a good feel for the game. He's a big body, and it's just another body frontline depth. And then here's Brandon Goodwin, a point guard who averaged 10 points and four assists for UCF last season. He's he's been terrific. I mean, his effort and practice every day is outstanding. I think he's he's a, a scoring guard, a little bit like Zach. Uh, he's not as big, but he's probably a little quicker, maybe more athletic. Uh, I think he'll be a. Uh, he's got the toughness and the leadership abilities that we want. So next year you'll have 
him, Reggie Reed, Zach Johnson, all who can play the point, but you can probably play at least one or two of them at the off guard as well. You can move Zach off the ball. You can move Brandon off the ball. Uh, you know, we've used Christian at the point some this year. We could probably, you know, he's off, obviously off the ball, but we'll have those guys and we'll have a, a lot of depth at the point guard position. And so those guys are essentially not themselves this year. And what, what are we looking at right here? This is game planning for a future opponent. And each one of these guys out here right now, Patson, uh, Brandon, they're essentially playing a player for another team to get your guys ready for that opponent. What we do is we put in the other team's offense so we can play against it. And and what we'll do is on a daily, t uh, you know, two days in advance, we'll put in two or three of their sets and we'll have the scout team, what we call the scout team run, so that way we can defend it. We'll tape it and show our guys how we're going to guard it. And then we'll uh, we'll go back and show the videotape to our guys of how we guarded it well or how we guarded it poorly so that way they Stand get feel. Two. And your assistant coach who is in Take charge two. of, Stand of by that, two. he'll tell, say, Brandon, hey, you're playing number okay. 10 on UNF. Yes. So every time you get an open shot, let it fly, you know, play like him. And so, so Brandon kind of has to pretend to be someone else all week. Oh, the scout team guys <laughs> have a pretty clear mind. They're, they're not worried about getting yelled at. Or I mean, if, if they get a shot, we tell them to take it. And there's not much pressure when you're, when you're in the scout team. Stand by camera All right, Coach, five. can you come with me over here to the Take coach's five. corner? We want to uh, break down Stand by niche three in the how morning. to Stand defend by camera ball three. screens. I mean, the, the ball screens is something that has exploded in all levels. First, can you explain Take the different three. ways to defend monitor. a ball screen? Well, a lot of it depends upon how the personnel the other team. Five. We might play somewhere where we're hedging. We Go might play five. somewhere we're Take switching. Five. We might play somewhere we're trapping. This instant right there, we hard hedged it and went back. Very so nice. we stayed on our same guy. This instant right here. We trap it, half trap it, and everybody draw what we call drags to it. Now Meech is, is flat hedging because he's the five man. We talked about, we talked about three, chasing guys off the line and giving a shot. Now Meech is flat, flat hedging, one. so he hedges it from elbow to elbow. So just take away the drive. So just take away the, drive just take away the driving angle. Now in this situation, we're switching one through four, and the five man is, is hedging the ball, is hedging, flat hedging the ball screen. So unfortunately, we give up an offensive rebound. Take three. There's a switch. Mark goes back on it. Give afraid a little rester. Now, same thing here. This is a tremendous series right there. Stand tremendous the job five. defensively. Now, Coach, sometimes you just flat out switching. Is this because the guy gets caught, or is that the game plan, hey, let's switch screens? Well, right there, we flat hedged okay. it with the five men with Trey, and, and sometimes we will switch one through four, and late in the shot clock, sometimes we switch all five. It's, a lot of it depends on who we're playing. Right there, you see we got caught in Stand a switch late, three. late in the shot clock. Uh, right there is a flat hedge because they were running a little bit of a horns alignment. Right there, there should be a switch, which there is. And now, since it was a 4 or 5, we didn't switch it. There again, we, we flat hedged it because it's a 5 man. And that's where North Florida spreads you out because they're, three, three. unlike a lot of other teams, they have a 4 take and a 5 three. man that can really shoot the ball with its yeah. three point range. Yeah, so the, the most devastating way to take away the ball screener is the first one we saw and there where the Demetrius really the got out and hedged that screen, forced the ball handler Package up one toward next uh, sound. half court, really just destroyed what they were trying to do there. It's super off the top. When you say that you switch towards the end oh, of the shot clock, how do you yeah. communicate that? So, so what, under 10, switch all ball eight, screens? Eight, we'd have a call. And all of our You'd players, yell something out. All, all of our pack, players, buddy. the guys oh. from the bench, all the guys on the court will start yelling it so they know that we're, what we're doing we're switching things and uh, you know there's a lot of different ways to play ball screens but I think the way we've done it has helped our guys and made it a little bit simpler with maybe the exception of Antravius Simmons your big guys can defend Especially perimeter me. guys for at least a couple seconds so that's a, a huge advantage to have. Have you been happy with how your guys have communicated defensively? And Definitely, defense? for the most part. I think we had yeah. that glitch for those games. So I think having Meech back also allows you to play ball screens differently. You can trap or you can switch five with him because he's so athletic. With Trey, we try to keep him on his man for the most part. Let me really put you on the spot. Let's say you're defending five. Steph Curry. How would you defend ball screens when he's running off? Hope he you hope he misses. That's so five. We've, we've coached against I coached. I was fortunate there. enough to coach against him once when we were Stand at KU. He's, he's obviously evolved, but it's so hard because he stretches your defense because he shoots with such great, great range. If you go under a ball screen, even near, you know, you know the, 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 the way beyond the three-point line, he can shoot from behind it. And if you if you hedge it at all, he's such a good passer. He throws it back, and Draymond Green and those guys are such nightmares. Take three. And the reason that Very most nice. teams will set screens with a big guy set guard. got it up somehow. Guard, There's two guys the talking guy here. bigger and can set a better screen. I want to build but it, the it forces now. you into a mismatch if you switch yeah, it. Now there's a mismatch like, one way or like the other. Ask these questions. Oh, wow. well, thank Stand you for, for one. breaking here that down for us, Coach. Our show Sounded feature this week top. is on the women's Stand team's needs one. offense. Anyone who watches Sounded them can tell it's different. But here's a more detailed explanation for the motion offense that allows them to play with five guards at a time.
FGCU runs 109. FGCU dribble pass usually them plays with five guards on the court at the same time. They rarely pass the ball into the post, and they I'll just about never now. take a shot. That is isn't a layup Alfredo, or a three-pointer. Shots from this area, the mid-range, pretty much never happen. They view them as a low percentage shot. The Eagles need dribble drives to be successful. That leads to layups and kickouts for three. Wow. Good. They don't simply come down and try to dribble past the defender that's locked in. I like in that he's shooting in Tallahassee. First, they like need that. to get the defense <laughs> off balance. They do that by passing and cutting 30. and screening. To create the kind of shots we want, we have Back to have to five camera. people working Two together, moving push and creating shots. The you know, what I say the most is nice just move location. or screen or just getting Bring kids to in. keep working and moving and making them guard some actions. As the defense chases players around and tries to work through the screens, the Eagles can usually find a time to strike. When they 15. see a player closing out off balance, they dribble, dribble pass, pass them. Is the out. If another defender Ten helps, seconds. they pass it out. If not, they drive all the way to the hoop. Coach Mesco teaches Five. his players to always Standby. be ready to shoot. Two, one, if for no other reason, it might lead the defense to launch Go out two. at you, at which time okay. you can dribble past them. All right, Coach. The, the, the basics one. of passing and moving and screening, everybody thrives to do that as well as FGC women do. But in terms of some of the other ways that they play and with the size that they play, do you think you can get away with that on the men's level? Uh, I think you look around. I mean, North Florida very That's rarely. I mean, from, from teams in the men's side, and uh, North Florida is playing the percentage. They're shooting a lot of threes and a lot of layups. I think that uh, his offense, he has people so spread out that the percentages of well, the amount of shots they take from the three-point line as well as layups, I mean, they, they give people fits. That's why they're so good. What, what are your thoughts when you watch them play? Great spacing, offensively very efficient. Uh, the crazy thing is, uh, as great as they've been two. this year, they haven't shot the percentage that they usually do. And if they get on a roll offensively, there's no stopping them. And there are some signs that that might be happening. And that two. could be trouble for the rest With of the Super. Son. The ladies have Britain won 13 straight games as they just Pretty continue two. to dominate the conference. A 19-point win over Jacksonville on Thursday, and they were 25 better than North Florida on Saturday. FGCU is the Probably fifth best two, defense right? in the nation in terms of points allowed per game. They're eighth in the this. country in turnover Take margin. This. A big one on Wednesday night. Jacksonville's pretty tough. Or the two ladies next. will have to two. play there, and then it gets a lot easier at NJIT on Saturday. On Saturday. And that Saturday will be a doubleheader. Do, when you Stand guys, I mean, one. do you interact with the women at all when you're doing Take those one. doubleheaders on the road? Oh, it's, we're on different schedules. Yeah. Like, between shoot around and practice, it's, it's everything's flipped, and then uh, you know, it makes it a little bit different. Coach, I've got a uh, well. First, yeah, I've got three questions here um, that fans have submitted. So I want you to kind of break things down here. Elliot Kress wants you to elaborate on the vast improvement of Demetrius Morant from last season. Does he still have Take room one. to Stand grow? Stamani's three, clean. The, the, he has an unbelievable Stand amount three. of growth still, and he, he developed three. more than probably any young man that we've coached in a long time. Uh, the sad part is he hasn't been able to showcase. He's been, you know, he's only played half the games. Uh, I think the other night was a little bit through the there. left handed jump hook, the free throw development, the mid range game. I think that there's no doubt that he's got another level to take his game to. And we're excited. We just need to get him back out there completely healthy. Morant, a junior, he started his career at UNLV before transferring. And, coach, I don't know how this makes any sense, but I've seen it way too much in the game of basketball. When someone will come back from a long absence, an injury, whatever it may be, initially, for whatever reason, a lot of times they are okay. And then as the, kind of the time develops, it gets a little bit more challenging for him. So it wasn't totally surprising that Demetrius went out and played really well in his first Take game one. back. Do you, do you see where I'm coming from? Does he that make he any did, sense? but you know, the, the thing that shut Meech down again the second time wasn't the original injury. It was, it was related, but it wasn't the same th thing. So, I mean, I think the good thing is since he's been out, he's really been continuing to work on his skills, doing a lot of shooting stuff, even when it's stationary, a lot of ball handling stuff. And this conditioning isn't where it needs to be, but it's, it's a lot better than it could be. And he's not he's practicing fully right with you, but he's, yeah. he's doing some stuff in the yes. pool to keep his conditioning, and, yes. and you're going to manage. Him. Russell Kelly has a question for you. Says, love the lineup shuffling. Are starters chosen more based on good play or because of a favorable okay. matchup? A little bit of both. I mean, a lot of it's you're going to earn your starting spot. Some of the times we've had to play a little bit smaller or, had, or didn't have great matchups, and uh, we thought that we'd play certain lineups based upon what the other team Same had. And who, when they put a certain person in, okay. we'd play a guy because it was a better matchup for us. Do you? Worry? Are there some players that you've had who are just much better as starters or much better as backups? 
Uh, we've had Take a couple. One. I mean, I, I think the guys have been flexible enough. I mean, it, a lot of first of it's earned, but then you you know you can flip it around. The guy like Antravius has had some matchups that weren't great, but when they brought in a sub off the bench, it was a great matchup for him to play, which also okay. helped us. So it, that that helps, in, especially in si uh, switching situations. So as soon as the opposition makes a sub, then yes. Antravius goes in. All right, Jacob Barrett wants to know if your depth gives you an advantage against teams with smaller rotations like UNF and NJIT. You constantly go nine, ten, even eleven deep. To well, it, 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 I think in, in a lot of regards it has. And we've been shorthanded for us. I mean, we haven't had Meech, and we've had some other guys nicked up. But uh, hopefully, during the course of the season, you're going to wear some people down. The other thing with our young guys, it's enabled them to get minutes. I mean, that's really helped. It's, it's helped Ray Tucker a lot because he's had to play some front court, he's had to play some back court, and probably Take gotten two. more minutes because Meech, of Meech's injury. I got a question for you. Who's Take your one. best player? <laughs> Right now, Zach you know, arguably the way Zach has played the last couple of games, but that, that all depends. I thought the other night Julian played like a senior. Uh, I mean, you know, you get a, a lift from each, but I thought Antravius played well the other day. I think it's been different games. Uh, you know, Christian showed some some signs again the other day of coming back a little bit. He's had a little bit of a rough stretch, but I think just on different nights. Let's quickly flash up the ace on standings. The top four seed guarantees at least one home game in the conference tournament you see right there you see you five and four the eagles play at upstate on uh, thursday the sports two here. and seven camera in two the next. conference Eventual fpcu is at njit one. on saturday as part two. of that women's and men's doubleheader you beat both of these teams when you played them earlier at home you actually crushed upstate by 29 points is there anything you're gonna have to do to make sure your guys don't take these teams lightly take one. the second time around especially uh, upstate stand well, by upstate. Two. i mean we know that they've you know they've already won at njit yeah. i mean they're they're more than capable they've had a couple rough ones they're young the young guys are getting better uh, NJIT, we had complete control of the first half and kicked it away during the half, and then you know struggled and had to go to overtime. Uh, you know after we had a commanding lead. Yeah, that the first was the game where you're up 21 in the first half, and, we, and they came we, back. We, we did everything you, you shouldn't do for yeah. a little stretch, but uh, you know upstate with their zone 31. and uh, the young guys getting better, and they can throw the ball into Buchanan. I mean they've they've gotten better. Uh, Coach, your guys are playing with great purpose. You're obviously doing a great job with these Same guys. Two it's fun to watch. Good luck this week. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the guys and gals on the production staff making the show possible. Director Travis Turner. Track Thank you all for watching the Stand by Black. FCU basketball show. And fade to black. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.